It is important to put on the handbrake on the van before unhitching from your vehicle. To make sure the van is level before setup, attach the jockey wheel. Remove the trailer plug from the tow vehicle. Wind the jockey wheel up or down until the van is level. Now unhook both of the chains and the tow secure, if applicable, from your vehicle. Located in the boot at the front end of the van is the corner steady handle which is used to lower the corner steadies of the van. Insert the handle into position and wind in a counterclockwise direction until the corner steadies rest on the ground. Repeat this on all four corner steadies to stabilise the camper trailer. The gas bottles are located at the front of your van. Before using any appliances, first turn on the gas at the bottle. It is imperative that your leads are 15 amps. This will allow you to plug in a 15 amp site. Plug the mains power into the van's power inlet. If you are in a remote area or plan on travelling into such areas, we suggest that you talk to your dealer about a generator that is applicable to your van or a suitable solar system, if applicable. To fill the water tanks and connect to a water supply, unlock the water filler by rotating clockwise from the plastic key provided. The water tank's fillers are located to either side of the hose connection. That, when attached, will provide a constant supply of water to your kitchen sink, vanity and shower. Unlatch the external roof clips at each corner of the camper. Never try to wind the roof up until all four corner latches are unlocked. Ensure all load has been removed from the roof rack before lifting the roof. Insert the winding handle into the position and wind in a clockwise direction to raise the roof. Continue winding until the height gauge cable is almost tight. The height gauge cable is located directly above the winder position. The pull-out step is located under the door on the Outback model. Simply pull out the step. Once the roof is all of the way up, pull out the bed end until it stops. Do not push beds in or out without the roof all the way up. Insert both of the roof safety supports into place. They are located under the bed and need to go in opposite corners of the camper trailer. Be sure the beds are extended all the way out. Fit the bed end support bar into the brackets on the chassis and under the bed end frame before allowing any weight on the beds. The support poles are placed under each mattress. To help insert the support poles under each bed, we recommend that you place your shoulder under the bed end to allow easier placement. Position the canvas around the edges of the bed. Repeat this step at the other bed end. Go inside and insert the internal tent support bars over the bed ends and slide into the locking slot. Now fit the covers around the riser arms. Attach the canvas underneath the outside of the bed ends by means of the Velcro material. Ensure the bottom door is closed before unfolding the top door from the ceiling. To set up your door, firstly unclip the door and allow it to drop so you can align the pins into the locating holes. Now lock at the top of the door using the hinges. Simply connect the top section of the door to the bottom using the latch. Fit both the inner and outer seal to the door for the ultimate in protection against the elements. Start by unclipping, unzipping and untying your awning released to the ground. Next, unpack the annex poles, pick up and connect one spring-loaded pole and feed through the end of the awning. Connect the side awning pole to the camber to meet the end of the awning. Repeat this process for both the front and rear ends. 
Continue by connecting your two upright poles to the annex so as the awning is standing upright. Clip in the two support poles to the centre of the awning and camper. Complete this step by putting in place the remaining three upright poles to support the awning. Next unzip and unclip the bed end flies and release. Unpack the four metal poles that will be put in place to support both the front and rear bed ends. Hook in the one upright support pole to the camper and align with the hole to connect and stand upright. Repeat this process to the front bed end of the camper. Now that the annex and bed end support and upright poles are all connected, wind up the camper until it's fully extended. Now begin to extend all awning support poles and lock into places at the desired height. Attach the guy ropes to the awning, peg into place and tighten until taut. Place in the remaining support poles to the corner of the bed flies, attach guy ropes and peg into place. Slide on the camper annex, trim from one end to the other and connect the push studs into place. Finish by unpacking the annex walls, use the two smaller canvas annex walls and slide into the side of the camper, velcro and attach firmly. Zip into place with the roof to fully assemble. Lastly, repeat this process to both the front and rear ends of the annex walls. Plug in the 12 volt connection to enable roof lights operation. Your dealer should have explained your isolating switch location to you. Turn on the isolating switch. This will turn on 12 volt to the RV. The coast control panel will monitor your water and battery levels. To check levels, flick the monitor switch to the left and hold it there. This will show you if your water tank is full and or quarter full, half full or three quarters full. It will also show you your battery levels. To turn your 12 volt pump on, flick the pump switch to the right. Your 12 volt pump will only be on if you are free camping or pulled up on the side of the road. This will bring your tank water up by pressurizing it. The drifter control panel monitors water tank levels and the 12 volt battery charge state. It will show you the volts on your battery and the amps in your battery. The switch on the top of your battery switch, this will either turn on your battery power or isolate it. If the battery is off, it will say in the corner of the screen battery off and the water pump off. To turn on the battery, flick battery switch down. The battery switch needs to be on to charge up any power source. The bottom switch is your water pump switch which will turn on your 12 volt water power. Flick the switch down to bring up your tank water levels. If mains pressure water is not available, use water in your tanks. Firstly, check the water level in your tank by pressing the monitor button on the water level gauge. To operate, press the button marked pump. You can now turn on the tap. Please note, when using mains water, make sure the pump is turned off. When not using mains, simply pump the handle until the water flows. If mains pressure water is not available, use water in your tanks. Firstly, check the water level in your tank by viewing the monitor on your drifter control panel. To turn the pump on, use the switch with the water drop symbol. You can now turn on the tap. Please note, when using mains water, make sure the pump is turned off. When not using mains, simply pump the handle until the water flows. Turn the gas bottle on and also turn the water heater switch on. Located at the main switchboard, a light next to the switch will go out once the hot water system ignites. Your dealer will have demonstrated this to you. Simply turn the internal gas switch off, open the door of the hot water service unit, remove the pin and turn the switch to the on position. Press the red button on the left to scroll through the menu. 
This will tell you the solar information required for use. Your dealer will have programmed your remote for use. Point the remote towards the unit and press the power on button. The LED light indicates cooling or heating mode. You can adjust the airflow to front and rear with the damper thumb wheel. Please refer to the instruction manual supplied with the product for further use. Rotate the handle until it stops. This means that the antenna is at full height. Pull down and spin the exterior disc, which will rotate the antenna until you have reception. The TV can either be used on a 12 volt via the socket in the antenna point or direct to the 240 volt via the power point. Both leads are supplied with the unit. If running the TV on 12 volt, only a drop in the power can cause an intermittent drop in picture. For best results, use 240 volts as your first choice of power. The antenna has a built-in amplifier. Press the button to turn the amplifier on. Press power on the television and the DVD. For detailed use of these, refer to the owner's manual supplied with the product. Remember before travelling, ensure the TV is secured. To turn on, press the button labelled with an S for source. Press the source button to scroll through the functions. To insert a disc, press the top left button and the face will drop. Insert the disc and close the face. For more features, please refer to the user manual supplied with the product. Turn the control to which power supply you would like to use. When travelling, switch the fridge to 12 volt DC. In a caravan park with 240 volts, switch the knob to 240 volts AC. In an area with no mains power, turn the knob to gas. To light, press and hold the gas release button, then press the igniter until the indicator points to green, then release. Do not under any circumstances run the fridge on gas when travelling. Please refer to the owner's manual for further use. Turn and hold down the knob for the burner you wish to light. Now press the Ignite button and hold down until flames appear from the burner. The same process applies with the griller and oven if applicable. Please note that the grill door is to remain open when the griller is in use and the glass lid must be fully up when any burners are in use. When using the griller for the first time, run for 15 minutes and the oven for 30 minutes without food inside. It is important to turn off all burners and allow them to cool down before closing the lid. Remove the cooking plate from the microwave oven before you start travelling. The microwave has a 25 litre oven capacity and 5 power level setting. The microwave has the following settings. Quick start, auto defrost, speed defrost, multi-stage cooking, auto cook and features a child lock option. The roof hatch can be used in two positions. Please follow the grooves to select the position. You can slide the fly screen across the roof hatch for protection while still allowing light through. There is also a block out screen for use. Slide in the beds, lower the roof and double check that all the roof clamps are locked. Turn off the gas, wind the rear and front corner steadies. Use the jockey wheel to raise the front of the van. Position your vehicle's tow ball under the hitch of the van and lower the jockey wheel. Release the handbrake after the hitch has connected with the tow ball and you are now ready to travel. Using a good fiberglass polish and a car cleaner that does not contain ammonium, use warm water and a sponge to remove dirt and grime, and in most cases, warm water will be sufficient. A soft cloth needs to be used when cleaning the windows to prevent scratching. Once again, please remember, cleaning products must be ammonia free. Check the VIN plate for correct tyre pressures. Be sure to check before every trip. Remember to check your wheel nuts every 100 k's for the first 400 kilometres. Your first service is at 1,000 kilometres and every other service after 10,000 kilometres or every 12 months. For safety reasons, be aware that you need more room for turning and extra space required when approaching and exiting fuel bowsers. Be aware when towing you do need a greater braking distance while in traffic and when approaching traffic lights. If you require more advice in towing skills, we suggest you liaise with your dealer. Most recognised caravan parks have provision to dispose of waste from your toilet. Just remember, if you are unsure, ask one of your fellow Jayco owners. We are sure 
that they will only be too happy to help and offer advice.